Hi, this is a little video uh, that I've been wanting to make for a while to talk about what I wear for my winter biking commute. I live in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. It gets pretty cold here and I cycle as my main mode of transportation year round. So um, I've managed to cycle and be comfortable anywhere down to minus 40 Celsius. So um, my first tip is just to make a little list on your phone of what you wear um, at different temperatures and what works for you. Um, a lot of people think I'm crazy for doing this, but I think it really makes a big difference. Like, uh, all you have to do in the morning is just look at what the temperature is, look at your little list, and see what's worked in the past, um, and put those clothes on, and once you get it kind of dialed in, then you are you can just be comfortable when you're riding. Um, I think a lot of people just kind of wear what they wore the day before, even though the weather might have changed pretty dramatically. So. To me, that's, that was kind of a big breakthrough that, that made the, the winter just a lot more enjoyable for me. Um, some people think it's important to take wind chill into consideration, but I think once you're biking, there's always going to be a pretty good wind. So really, there's a constant wind chill, regardless of how windy it is. So um, if you just look at the temperature, I think that's all that's really important. So um, that's what I do. and. Like I said, once you get it figured out what clothes are right for what temperature, um, you're kind of set. Just, you know, have a little list in your phone. If you get somewhere, you find your hands were a little cold, just make a little note in your phone that you want to wear warmer mitts at that temperature range. And then at that temperature for the rest of your life, your hands are going to be warm. Um, so what have I figured out works for me? I'm going to start from the top I work down. Um, the first thing, the head, um, glasses, so I, I use these glasses, it's good to keep the wind out of your eyes. Um, I like these regular sunglasses that aren't kind of quite as dorky as this but aren't wrap around, uh, give me really watery eyes because you kind of get turbulence going into your eyes. Um, so I like these ones from MEC, um, I use the clear. Uh, when it's dark outside, which is a lot of time in the winter, and I use these progressive lenses. Uh, I switch in the progressive lenses uh, when it's sunny, and that usually works pretty well for me. Um, so around about plus five, uh, I'll just put a headband on. I find just keeping my ears warm makes a huge difference. Uh, in the winter, I put this kind of rain shield on my helmet. Um, which the main thing is just that it blocks the air vents, which makes my helmet like quite a bit warmer. So that's basically my setup. Down to about um, minus five, at which point my cheeks start getting a little cold and then I just basically cover my entire face with this magnetic uh, balaclava. And uh, this balaclava Kind of annoying thing about it, it doesn't really cover the neck, so I like to add um, a neck warmer as well, just to keep the wind off my neck, basically. Um, this Bellaclava works for me, that's the brand. I'm not really sure it's the best possible Bellaclava. There's um, one made by a company called North 45 that looks pretty cool. And there's a popular one made by a company called Cold Avenger. Um, they both look like they might be better than this one. Um, although it is kind of nice with this one to be able to like take it off sometimes, but I don't honestly do that that much. So um, the trick with the Bellaclava is to get one that allows you to breathe enough that you don't feel like you're suffocating while you're biking, but at the same time, uh, keeps you warm and also um, doesn't fog your glasses that actually like lets the air the warm air get out of your mouth fast enough that it doesn't just shoot up right into your glasses and blind you so um, I actually like cut and re-sewed 
this balaclava to make it like really flush to my face so that the uh, so that when I breathe the air goes like right out of it so um, that's working for me right now um, basically that works for me until about minus 10 at which point I uh, add um, this snowboard helmet and ski goggles so I would have this and the balaclava and the um, uh, net warmer. And that basically takes me all the way down to minus 40. We woke my cat up. This is my cat, Climate Jane. Um, okay, so that is the head. The next thing is the torso. So, um, I use this, uh, Windbreaker from uh, Mech. It's kind of like semi-wind resistant. It has um, breathable panels on the um, arms to uh, to keep you from getting too sweaty. So I might put this on starting around like plus eight or something like that. So it doesn't have to be too cold before I want to put this on. Then. Uh, I have this kind of mid layer from Mech. Sorry, you got the cat out. Okay. <laughs> I have to like climb the other door. Uh, yeah, so I add the mid layer, maybe at like just above zero, might start start doubling up the two of these. Um, this one's kind of nice. It's got a hood. It's warm. Um, so that works until I get down to about uh, minus 15, at which point I kind of switch the setup entirely, and I have this uh, fleece jacket, and then this Gore-Tex jacket. And then that takes me down to about minus 25, at which point I would have three layers, the mid layer, fleece jacket, and the Gore-Tex jacket. Um, and that generally, that keeps me warm down to minus 40. So um, one point I have is that I find if I'm going on a short ride, like about 20 minutes, I like to keep my torso a little bit warmer, like I, I um, Add a bit more warmth um, to keep me just to keep me cozy right away heading out. If I'm going on a longer ride, like maybe about an hour, then I find I will get too sweaty if I have too much on my torso. My my uh, the torso is what really stays warm if I'm going on a longer ride. Like I start generating heat, and uh, my body just draws the heat into my center, and that's what gets really hot and sweaty. So. If I'm going on a long ride, I'll actually uh, dress down a bit and I'll be kind of cold for the first 15 minutes, but then um, the blood will start flowing and uh, I'll start burning energy and I'll actually be like pretty warm. Um, the other point is that I always tuck my something from my top layer into my bottom layer because otherwise I get air just like shooting up um, underneath and that makes me super cold. So I always tuck the two in, and if I'm wearing multiple layers, sometimes I even kind of sandwich them together to like prevent air from going up and down from the bottom layer to the top layer. Okay, that is how I dress my torso. Let's talk about hands. Uh, I don't have great circulation. I have cold hands like indoors, so, uh, but I have managed to figure out how to keep my hands warm. Um, so these are just some really pretty light cycling gloves. Might start wearing them about like plus 10, plus eight, something like that. Um, then when it gets down to um, plus five, I would switch to these kind of light mitts. I've kind of, I'm kind of more uh, shifting to more of a mitt-based philosophy lately. I find I don't really need gloves to bike. I'm fine with mitts, and I think that uh, keeping the fingers together just keeps the hand, hands warmer without 
having to have uh, bulkier gloves. So um, that's that's my philosophy lately. Um, then around zero, I would switch to some, um, you know, just thicker mitts like this. And then um, uh, around minus five, I switch to these mitts. So these are the Outdoor Research Ulti mitts. Um, they, uh, I actually did my research. These, as far as I can tell, are the warmest mitts money can buy. There's actually a uh, research paper that was done in Antarctica on these mitts, or, or on mitts, and they uh, tested these to be the warmest mitts they had. Um, also, I saw a recommendation for these mitts uh, by a guy who has the Guinness World Record for the longest time spent at the South Pole, and he's very enthusiastic about these mitts. Uh, they're a little expensive, like 200 bucks, but I think they are completely worth it. Um, they're, they have this modular design, so they're very, very warm, but you can kind of take uh, the inside out and just wear the inside if you're getting too sweaty, or you can just wear this. Um, they uh, have this really long um, sleeve on them to keep any air from getting in. Um, these mitts are awesome, and I wish I bought them sooner. And I love them. What else can I say about these mitts? That's about it. Buy Outdoor Research Ulti Mitts. Um, however, these mitts don't keep my hands warm past about too much below minus 20, because I just have bad circulation. So um, the solution I came up with was to take these Zippo lighters, uh, they're not lighters, they're Zippo hand warmers, um, and they basically they burn lighter fluid at a very low temperature in a controlled way um, using, what is it called, like a carboxic converter or something? I forget. Anyways, Basically what you do is you take a lighter, um, you warm this up for about 10 seconds, and then it starts to get quite hot. Um, you put it in this little bag, which controls how much oxygen it gets. And then I would just put it inside the mitt here, uh, basically in the back of my hands, like that. And that would keep my fingers warm right down to minus 40. It gets quite warm. and. Uh, the other solution would possibly be um, electric gloves, but uh, they're quite expensive and uh, they're a little heavy because they have a lithium ion battery in them. Um, this is quite light, it's only about $30. It's a little bit more of a hassle because you have to keep um, lighting it and then extinguishing it. I extinguish it by putting it in this little plastic bag that I carry around with me when I get to where I'm going. And then you have to store it upright in the plastic bag wherever you are, um, and then relight it when you leave. So it's a bit of a hassle. Um, you may prefer um, electric mitts if you're gonna bike around it's below minus 20. Um, some people use um, those bar covers. I tried them and I, first of all, found them really awkward to like put my hands in and out of my, um, in and out of them, like every time I got to a uh, red light or something. Um, I just, like I just didn't like not being able to just freely move my hands. And um, also I didn't find that they kept my hands much warmer, like the cold air can still get in, you know, behind them, like they keep the wind off, but I don't know, you know, this glove is already keeping the wind off, this glove is already keeping the wind off, so they didn't really do much for me. So I don't get why they're so popular at all. But that's just me. Maybe they work for you. Okay, moving right down. We get to the lakes. So the first thing is I um, have this like windbreaker layer. This is a, a Gore-Tex uh, windbreaker pants. I really like them. The zip on the side is handy because that means um, you can kind of uh, unzip them from the bottom and take them on and off without 
having to take your shoes off, which is convenient um, if you're getting somewhere where it would be awkward to take your shoes off. Um, yeah, so the first thing is just to like keep the wind off of you, because like I said, when you're biking, uh, the wind is always blowing, and that makes it way colder if you don't have a wind repellent layer. So um, I would put that on about minus five, and then um, about minus ten, I would add underneath it this like soft shell uh, layer to keep me even warmer. And again, that that pretty much covers it. I'm pretty much comfortable like that all the way down to minus forty. Um, Actually, that's not true. I think I did add long johns. No, that's true. Below minus 30, I think I add long johns to that uh, setup. Um, another thing I want to mention is I bought these um, Dewar uh, fleece jeans. They have like kind of like a fleece uh, in them. And uh, when I got them, I was pretty skeptical because the fleece isn't very thick. Um, but I do actually find these are pretty warm, like, you know, maybe down a few degrees below zero. Um, I can be pretty comfortable biking around town in these, and I don't have to um, put the windbreaker layer on, which uh, is cool because, you know, that windbreaker layer is a little awkward, having to put it on and off every time I get somewhere. Um, okay, that brings us to the feet, uh, which is the other part of me that I have a real hard time having not great circulation keeping warm. So um, the first thing is just switching from sneakers to like hiking boots. That probably happens around zero. Although um, these hiking boots aren't waterproofed, so you have to be careful. Like if it's slushy outside, um, it doesn't have to be very cold. And But if your feet get, get like wet, then uh, my toes can be freezing and it's only like, it could even be above zero, but I'll have freezing cold toes. So if it's not slushy and uh, it's above zero, then these are cool. Beyond that, um, I just went out, I went to Mech and I tried to purchase the warmest pair of winter boots I could. Um, well, well, not being super clunky and, and bulky. Um, and I came up with these. Um, they're made by Keen, something. Yeah, Keen. That's them. I'm pretty happy with these boots. Um, they're advertised as keeping me warm down to minus 40. I would not say that is the experience I've had with them. Um, I definitely do appreciate them. Like, uh, would definitely use these like at minus 10 and below. Um, or sorry, probably minus five and below. Um, however, um, about minus 10, I would add a really warm pair of socks uh, to them. And um, below minus 20, I found I just cannot keep my toes from freezing if I'm out for long enough. If, I'm on, if it's below minus 20 and I go for an hour long ride, uh, my toes will get cold. Um, if I don't use some electric socks. So I had to break down and fork out the money to get um, some electric socks. Uh, I found they helped a lot. At minus 40, my toes still got cold. Um, there's another brand of electric socks that works with like Bluetooth and has a heating element that goes all the way around the toe. This heating element is only below the toe. Um, so I'm wondering whether I, I may return these and get the, the other type of sock and hope that it's it keeps my toes warmer than these because that was the one thing that was still cold at minus 40 was my some of the, the toes on the outside like the big toe and the little toe that weren't directly under the heating element still got a little cold um, with these so but they did help a lot uh, I tried doubling up like wearing two pairs of warm socks but I find it doesn't work because um, there's, because it, they don't really fit very well in the boots and you end up just compressing your toe and so you don't get much more insulation, you just kind of cut off circulation to your toes and that's really what's keeping them warm is the circulation. Um, 
So I suppose I could have also bought these boots a half size bigger and then I could fit more warm socks into them. Um, yeah, that's it. So I guess my big take home message is just that if you actually think about it and kind of make a list and just do some like rational experimenting um, and I guess to be fair are willing to fork out some money for some warm clothes then you can totally um, figure it out and be totally comfortable biking anywhere uh, down to minus 40 like me okay thanks for watching